Okay, let's do this. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 30 of Burly Pearly Knits. My name is Paul and this is my knitting and creativity outlet. Um, I can't believe that I have gotten to episode 30 already. I need to open my book because I need some notes. Um, <laughs> mm, I got things in my teeth. I just munched. Okay, um, I can't believe that we got to episode 30. It's taken me two years, two whole years, um, but I am an infrequent poster. So <laughs> if you're new to the episode, welcome. It's, you know, anywhere between one week to three months between a post. Who knows? It's a surprise. So hit that notification button, hit the sus subscribe. You can also follow me on Ravelry and Facebook where I sometimes put things and Etsy where I sell stuff. Um, nothing knitted, but more the knitting accessories. This like this beautiful pro giant project bag, projet bag that I hand sewed, well, I had sewed on a machine. Um, zipper top, lined, and it's made with gorgeous uh, Chitenge fabric from Africa that I purchased when while I'm traveling down there, not so much this year, and a water resistant base. Yeah, anyway, ta-da, a little selfless, selfish plug there. Anyway, um, welcome, squeak, squeak. Uh, <laughs> there's the chair squeaking. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I have been so busy these last few weeks. I think it's been three weeks since I posted last. So this is actually um, a fairly recent kind of like new thing going on. Usually it's <laughs> a lot longer between posts. So three weeks is good. Um, I have been so busy because I haven't been making giant shawls such as these, which take a long time. I have been pattern writing and making mittens like mad mitten mad mitten magic going on i've made a couple hats i uh, yeah let's get to it let's get to it <sighs> what did madonna say don't just stand there let's get to it strike a pose there's nothing to it oh something vogue anyway Whatever. Um, <laughs> I have been planning, 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 planning. Um, and one of the first things that I made after the last episode was this gorgeous hat. Now, I used um, Mal Abrigo, the Rasta weight, which is the giant, giant, giant one. And this colorway is called Diana. And there you go. Isn't it? gorgeous. So I did these giant um, cables kind of at different intervals around the hat. Um, and I just love the effect. It's a beautiful hat. It's got gorgeous colors. Um, if you find this stuff, Mel Abrigo, Diana, the Rasta colorway. Um, <clears throat> oops, wrong way. Uh, that one. Oh, this light is too bright. Um, then get it because I can't wait for a really cold day to go out for a walk and wear this. Isn't it gorgeous? Blink, blink. I always think of cartoons. Uh, blink, blink, blink. I have those sounds. Anyway, whatever. What am I wearing? Oh. Well, if you're an older viewer, and I'm not talking about your age, I'm talking about the time that you've been watching me, you will notice <laughs> that I uh, have worn this before and I have finally made a pattern. So this is the Makoro shawl and it's got these lovely little zigzags. It's just eyelets the whole way through. Um, this one I originally did in Olan yarns, O-L-A-N-N, -N. Um, and this is a light fingering, so I think I used 2.75s on this. 
Um, the pattern calls for three millimeter needles, which is something more for this lovely ensemble. This is from Estelle Yarns. This is their Lava um, colorway. And you can see it's got that same zigzaggy pattern in there. And right now I'm making another one and I'm just in the beginning phases. I started this morning. Uh, this is the Makoro shawl. Um, it's going to be gorgeous. This is going to be done in this beautiful blue ombre fade from Sheepy's Whirl and it's a uh, cotton and acrylic blend and I absolutely love Sheepies. If you've watched my podcast before, you'll know <laughs> that I've done quite a few things in Sheepies. Um, yeah, so that pattern is now available on Ravelry. It is the Makoro, M-O-K-O-R-O, -O, um, which is in Africa, in Southern Africa. It is a dugout canoe usually made from ebony and that's what they use in the Okavango Delta. Um, and I just love the word Makoro. It just kind of rolls off the tongue. And the zigzaggy thing kind of reminds me of the water and the lightning storms that would come at night. And it was really just an incredible experience that I had in Botswana that I just want to call the shawl, Makoro. So there it is. It is done. It is on Ravelry. It is five dollars. <laughs> um, and I just love now that I'm writing patterns. So thank you to everyone out there who has purchased a pattern and for supporting me, especially during these difficult times. Um, I really appreciate it. What else did I make? So, okay, yeah. Um, other than shawls and the hat, I also got this book last time. You'll recognize it, Saltwater Mittens. Fantastic book. It has so many beautiful heritage uh, patterns and designs in here. Um, the authors, Christine Legro and Shirley Scott, they kind of deconstructed a whole bunch of um, mittens from different families on the east coast of Canada and published this beautiful book. And my first pair that I made from here is right here. I'm going to put them on. Um, I made them in gorgeous Cascade fiber. It's their Cascade 220 Heathers. There we go. Um, and this one is kind of, these colors are like a yellow and a light gray. And I'm just so happy with the way they turned out. Look at those, they're so soft. I probably wouldn't use this wool right next to my face. It's a tiny bit itchy, but on the hands, it's absolutely okay. If I used it as a hat, it would probably be fine. Um, I'm just not super duper sensitive to the itchy yarn, but I love it, love it, love it, love it. Um, they're called trigger mitts because you can still use your finger to do things like hunting and pull the trigger on your gun or reel in your fishing lines. Um, I just, these are amazing. So I made these super excited um, out of this yarn. And then I wanted to use the yarn that I showed you last time, this beautiful Estelle Yarns Eco Paint DK. So it's not a worsted, right? Like the stuff is worsted. It's a little bit thicker. You can see the difference. Um, so I used a smaller needle for this. Um, I used a four millimeter, but I paired it with the um, Kid Silk Haze from Rowan. And I think these two colors just go really well together. And the finished result, let me put one mitt on. The finished result is gorgeous. So I did a trigger mitt again, um, 
but you can see how the Kid Silk Haze kind of just softens those wider colors and really brings out that beautiful gold kind of halo that's on these now. Look at that, it's so pretty. Um, let me get the other one on. I did a moss stitch on the palms and then just a straight stockinette stitch on the hands. Now, I kind of messed up on the sizing. <laughs> You'll notice that the, the cuff goes like partway into my palm. Oh well, what you gonna do? They're still warm, they're still very toasty, and Pablo will probably end up taking these from me because he has hands that would fit these. Um, one thing that I'm really proud of is you'll notice the decrease for the hand. So I actually followed the contour of my pinky and hand there and started the decrease of five rows earlier on the pinky side. <laughs> I knit five rows with decreases and then I started doing an even decrease across both on this side and this side. So I think that turned out really nicely. They fit perfectly to a slightly smaller hand than my own. I love them. They're really cozy. So I was obviously on a roll. I, I haven't even talked about this yet. I was obviously on a roll and I, in the middle of my yellow phase, <laughs> I decided that I needed to do or I wanted to do some mosaic knitting because I was working a, a shift at the yarn shop at Pudding Yarn, um, and which is where this toque or hat pattern is from. So go to puddingyarn.com if you want to get the pattern. Um, anyway, so I was working and I wanted something easy enough to do while I was working. And a while back I started a, um, a mosaic uh, piece I think it's called the, the Shift Cow um, on Ravelry. And I love it, but uh, it was like a whip sitting in a bag, sitting in a corner. And so I pulled that bag out, I pulled all the yarn out, I undid it. So I have these colors left as well. These are full 50 gram balls. It's like 300 and something yards or meters per ball. Um, <clears throat> where's the... Well, then it's uh, the Gilsk Tweed. There we go. That's it there. I've stuck it to my, <laughs> I'm, I'm writing stuff um, to my pattern book. And I just did this basic um, mosaic and it's gorgeous. So you're only knitting one color um, per row and you're slipping some stitches. So what you end up with is this gorgeous color work where you're not having to carry yarns over. So um, for example, if you look at like this, where you're doing color work, right? You're carrying your yarns at the back. You can see that there, right? Um, this, you're not carrying your yarns. <laughs> it's very messy at the back. Um, you're slipping stitches so it's a slight it's a different process but you end up getting a color motif and i really really enjoy it and i got this pattern um it's just a simple 144 stitches around because it's a 12 stitch repeat per block so i did 12 times 12 is 144 and i figured that would be a nice size for a cowl oops pulled my hat off um, and it is, it's gorgeous. And I can even fold it in. I can double it over if I need to. Um, and I went a, a needle size slightly bigger than what's suggested. I used a four millimeter on this. Um, and I'm definitely going to do it again with these colors. I think they're fantastic. I think, I think I'm addicted <laughs> to mosaic knitting and it kind of inspired the next project that I'm going to show you um, and this was all done in 
Alpaca Classic, the Rowan um, Alpaca Classic. Um, and the colors I used, here they are. I'm getting all kerfuffled. Um, here's the colors that I used on this one. And you can see it's really, really soft. It's um, made with super fine alpaca and cotton. Um, 131 yards per 25 grams, so only 25 grams per. I used a total, including these ones, um, of five 25 grams to make, or to make this cow. Let's take this off. Um, super excited. This is beautiful. So this is for a gift for someone. Oops, that's the wrong side. I'm showing you the wrong side and it's still gorgeous. Okay, um, here's the right side. <laughs> there we go. Um, so I really had fun, you know, kind of transitioning through colors into another color and doing a little bit of mosaic knitting there and a little bit of mosaic knitting there and a little bit of mosaic there. But the rest is just um, knit pearls and uh, mosaic, uh, not mosaic, um, uh, moss stitch. And I think this is going to be gorgeous. This is intended to be a nice warm cowl or scarf that can be used in Saskatchewan, but to be, you know, fashionable, fashion. I love this pink and uh, the turquoise, how they just kind of go together. Really, really pretty. Um, if you go onto the Rowan site, <laughs> you will see the Annabelle's, I think, cowl. And this is basically it, but I just looked at the picture and I was like, mm, I don't need to buy it. I can make something. Um, and that's exactly what I did. But you can buy the pattern on Rowan's site. It's very light and airy. I just love it. Mm, and I washed it recently so it's all blocked and ready to go anyway so pretty i love it um oh one more uh two more things i also made ah uh, here we go so continuing with saltwater mittens um i've made uh some mitts and a hat for a friend of mine. So she's a tiny, tiny, tiny person. <laughs> These are the mittens. They've got a salt and pepper stitch on the palm. Um, but yeah, she's, she's like five foot nothing. And then I have a matching hat to go with it. And I am just so excited because I know that she's gonna love this. And, you know, you can even, if you want it tiny. She's little though, so this should be like a nice sized hat for her. You might have a little bit of a poof at the top. Anyway, um, I did these in um, some simple, simple, simple yarn. It's Superwash Merino, so it's not the best choice for color work. Um, I haven't blocked them yet either, so I'm, these stitches are going to even out a bit. Um, but it is made in this red, this gorgeous red, um, which is the Mal Abrigo Serza. Um, Superwash Merino, it's worsted. They, they call it worsted. I would say it's a light worsted. <laughs> um, somewhere between a DK and a worsted, actually. And then I just paired it with, pew, 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 pew. where are you? Anyway, I can't find it, but it's falling on the floor somewhere. I'm um, just a plain black from Barocco, which is also a superwash merino um, and really nice yarn to work with. I don't think it's going to pill or anything like that. 
but the two of them worked quite well together. I did go down a needle size to a 3.75 millimeter needle for this to make it a nice compact and small knit to make sure that as I was following the pattern, right, which is designed for a four, mil four millimeter needle, which is a woman's medium, I went down to a 3.75 and I think I achieved the woman's small. So we'll see uh, when Kathy opens her birthday present. <laughs> Kathy, I hope you're not watching. And, oh, there it is. That's the black, whatever, it's just black. Um, and that's it really. I mean, I also have, oops, I keep shaking the table. Um, a couple new books, which I'm really excited about. They just arrived yesterday. I was expecting them on Sunday, but they arrived yesterday. Alternate um, Stitch Dictionary by Andrea Rangel. I love my Stitch Dictionaries. And there's another one, 150 Scandinavian, Scandinavian motifs. Canadian, Scandinavian um, motifs. I think this is going to be super fun too. Just looking at the back of it, I'm really excited. Um, yeah, who knew I would be into color knitting and not shawls anymore. So I think the shawl period is coming to a rest and I'm ready for cozy mitts and gloves and cowls and things like that. <laughs> anyway, I think that's it. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Hit like, subscribe, all that blah, blah, blah stuff. Instagram, Ravelry, Etsy, whatever. I'm Burly Pearly. Thanks for tuning in and I hope to see you again soon once the weather, well, it's kind of crappy outside anyway. Um, yeah, I'll see you again soon once I've knit some more stuff. <laughs> Bye everyone. Stay home, stay safe, happy Thanksgiving, and all that wonderful things. Thanks. Thanks? The twangs? I don't know. Um, thank you also to everyone who sent me well wishes for my neck. I'm on some great meds right now in case you haven't noticed. And uh, yeah, that's what's making me say all these things. <laughs> Bye. Happy netting.